So 2020 was a it was a, it was a dope year for us. Yeah. Even in COVID, it was dope. Oh yeah, man. Yeah. We got a facility, um, and it's in Euless. So that's that's where we at. But it's 10,000 square feet. We are already almost about to outgrow it already because we got so much stuff going on in there. Hey guys, what's good? And welcome to the Coastline Life. If you're watching this video, that means you co-sign us and we co-sign you. So here are a couple of ways to support that Cosign Magazine. Number one, view the description below, click the link and purchase an issue of Cosign Magazine. It's like this, this one right here, physical. You can purchase this. Number two, you can also support us by purchasing Cosign merch. Hit the link below and it'll take you to all our past merch items and we'd love to have your support and see you wear a Cosign Magazine. Welcome to another episode of Cosign Conversations and Interview Series, man. Today, I got a friend, I got a homie, entrepreneur, businessman, colleague, whatever you want to call him, man. He's a good guy. Uh, he's a founder of RPA College, my guy, Reggie Calhoun Jr. How you doing, bro? What's up, bro? Man, thanks for coming here today, being a part of this, man. No doubt. How you doing today? Good, man. Good. Can't complain at all. Man, that's what's up, bro. So, what I want to do with you, bro, because there's so many layers to unpack, right? So many layers. So um, I always like to start from the beginning because that's where people get to know more about you. Um, I know as entrepreneurs, we tell our story a lot of times, but, you know, think of this as, you know, a completely new audience that you get to share your story with, your grind, your business acumen with. So, so kind of tell us, man, first off, who is Reggie Calhoun Jr.? And how does a young black man start college? <laughs> Man, believe it or not, um, Reggie Calhoun Jr., we, I mean, um, I say we, I always talk about myself in like five different things. Right, right. So many layers, right? right. But uh, originally from New Orleans, Louisiana. Okay. Um, grew up there, moved around a bit. Um, and my path to where I'm at now was just because of all the things that I was doing. Like I went to four high schools in four, in four years. Wow. Hurricane Katrina was my senior year. I went, I went back to Houston. I went back, and then I went to the Army. So I did 10 years in the military. Okay, I didn't know that. I know. Most, <laughs> most, most, most people don't, man. Okay. And then um, I went JUCO, and then I, I did a four year, and then I moved to Dallas. So it was just like, all those things were just creating a, like a thing, like, how do you use all of your experience that you've been through gotcha. to turn into something? Okay. Man, oh, even right there, bro. So <laughs> many, so many points we can go to. Okay. So let's go from okay, four years, uh, four different high schools. Yeah. And you played football all four years, or how was oh, it? Four four years. Yeah. Okay. Four high schools, four four football teams, four different states. Man, so how was it for you to transition to college? Cause like you're you're, you're moving around a lot. Were colleges even noticing you or no, nope. I that? had no idea about the recruiting process or even like how to even get into college. Right. So it was just like off the hip trying to figure it out. Um, so that is what led me to, you know, figure out how to get to school on my own, learning all the rules, the ins and outs about right. financial aid and gotcha. all those things. I went to PV. Okay, PV. For like yeah. like three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people that went to PV yeah. for a little minute. And and that was just because of me just not knowing how to call it. Pro process, process, I thought it was like high school. Like, yeah. You, you would get accepted, yeah. you go to school. Yeah. People gave me a bill, and I was like, yeah, I got to go home. <laughs> and I joined yeah. the Army. Okay. So right after PV, you joined the Army? Oh, yeah. You did 10 years in the Army. Yeah. Okay, what were you doing in the Army? What was your, uh, <laughs> what was your MOA? So my MOA, <laughs> my first one, I was, I was a 21 Charlie, which is a 12 Charlie now. Okay. I was an engineer, combat agent, you know, engineer, so I built bridges. Okay. I made bombs. Nice. I diffused bombs. I found yeah. IEDs, and uh, then I switched over to the Army Reserve, and I did um, um, Intel. Okay. So, a lot of a lot of research, a lot of reading, gotcha. which played a part in what I'm doing doing now, like researching, reading, learning. You know, just kind of bringing in all the intel and creating a. All right, man. So let me ask you this, because I come from, you know, my father was in the military. You do ten years. Why not do twenty? Like, why not go retire? Like, what made you want to get out in ten? Because the military was never a plan for me. Like, it was right. never a lifelong plan. It was just a reaction of. You didn't go to school, okay. you don't have a job, can't sit at home, so what you gonna do? Right. The next thing I knew was, you know, I wasn't gonna be a rapper. <laughs> so yeah. it was just go to the military, right? Sure. So I did that, but that was never like a life plan for me ever. Gotcha. I just happened to coast through those 10 years gotcha. and I looked up and I was like, this is not gonna be my, 
you know, the freedom that I like to have. Right, right, right. It just wasn't going to be my life. Thing, nah, man. for sure, man. So that's kind of with me too, man. Like, I did, I didn't go to the military, but I did uh, two years overseas in Afghanistan as a contractor, right? And I was going to sign up to go to the Army because I had my daughter. I was in college, broke. You know what I'm saying? I was hustling. I was in college. I was selling shoes, selling mixtapes, selling CDs, selling clothes, selling everything I get my hands on, jewelry, clothes, and it still wasn't enough. So I was like, man, I'm about to go to the military. So I took a practice ASVAB, and they were like, yo, you, you, you can go. Like, when you ready to take the real one? So I had applied to go to overseas like a year before, and I like I told my dad, and my dad was like, man, you know, this is what you got to do, you got to do. And then two weeks later, I got a call from a, a, a recruiter for uh, the contract I applied for, and they were like, we have a position open, it pays X amount of dollars, like six figures, do you want to go? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Right yes, right now. I'm thinking about you. If you're in the military, they're going to send me over there anyway. Right. And it's going to be on their terms. You know what I'm saying? At least as a contract, I can That's go. Right. Yes. At least I can go and I can come home whenever I'm ready to come home. Right. So, so I did that. Okay. So you did 10 years in the military and then you went to college? Nah. So because I was in the reserve, I was in school and in the military. Okay. So the 10 years were reserves. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't like full active duty. No, no, no. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you're doing that was, Even that was like. An ignorant part, and, you know, not just like not knowing how it worked. Like, I was trying to run from New Orleans, gotcha. and I joined the military, but they sent me right back to my unit in New Orleans. Uh, so I'm shit. like, dog, I, I didn't want to come back, <laughs> but I didn't know how the reserve worked. Or the, yeah, like, I thought once you was in, you in, yeah. you know. But yeah, you you, I learned as I was doing stuff. So I've always been like a risk taker. Like you try to just you want to find out, go yeah. they go try it out. Gotcha. Okay. So, so which JUCO did you go to first? I went to Trinity Valley. Trinity Valley. Where's, where was that at? That's in Athens. Okay. So, Athens, Texas. I'm in Louisiana and I'm just looking up schools like in Texas and I found this school and I just enrolled. <laughs> just enrolled. Didn't know the coaches there, nothing. So, I'm looking up all the bio of the coaches or whatever and, and the head coach was a coach at Tulane. Okay. He, he like lived in New Orleans. So I was like, bet. That's a relation, right? Yeah. So, boom, I hit him up. I said, hey, I'm coming. Oh, whatever, and he was like, cool. So I came, made the team, and and then like over the summer, I didn't go home. I stayed and I worked out. Yeah. Fall came, I I go to my locker. I ain't got no pads, no helmet, no name on the locker. So I'm like, yo, what's good? That boy said, uh, you were, you were uh, ineligible. I said, eligible? Bro, I ain't never played football before. I like, yeah. never played college ball before ever. So he was like, yeah, you and others. So I went and read the whole rule book of the NCAA on what makes you ineligible. Yeah. Nothing, nothing I ever did fit That's that. Good. So I go back to him and I said, no, nothing fit yeah. me being eligible. He was like, well, honestly, we um, we signed this guy from TCU. Uh, da, 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 we have to give a spot because you was out of state. That made you over the limit for out of state. I said, cool. So I go back to him, to my dorm room. And I, I try to find a school because I wanted to go back home now. Gotcha. So now I'm looking up schools in Louisiana yeah. that I can get into. I found one and I just enrolled. Okay, you tried it for that school too? Yeah. You made it? Oh, yeah, broke records there and everything. Like, That's what's up. What position were you playing? Corner. Cornerback? Yeah. Okay. It was crazy. Like, I, I walked in the office, I said, Look, coach, I ain't got no film. Yeah. I ain't got nothing. I said, Just give me a shot. I said, If I'm good, I'm good. Yeah. And if I suck, then send me home. Right, right. He was like, All right, bet. Dude, I was like six string. Damn. Yeah, I ain't <laughs> never been six string nowhere. Yeah. I'm six, I'm six string. Dang. And I went from sixth string to third string to second string to starting, breaking records, team captain, the whole nine. Dang, how long were you there for? All four years. That was All my right. first time going to a school four, four years. years. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm in a row. Okay, oh, so you graduated from there? Yeah. Okay, what was your degree in? Uh, exercise science. So I started off in like, <laughs> I started off in like fitness. I started off in like pharmacy, okay. pre-med, business, IT, finished out in, um, Exercise science. Okay. So who made you switch up so much? What was it? Dude, man, it was just like, I was like, I like this. I like this. Gotcha. And then uh, pharmacy, it was like, you know, being in New Orleans, like one of the best pharmacy schools is in New Orleans. Okay. Yeah. Right? So I was like, I'm going to be a pharmacist. Yeah, they make bread too. And they make bread. Yeah. But I thought, I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to be in a, in a Eight years. Like, a yeah. lot of school. A lot of school. You know, so I just figured it out. But I ended up getting my degree in exercise science because I told my ACL. Uh, and I was in anatomy and physiology at that time. Okay. So I'm learning about the body and rehabbing. Gotcha. So I was like, man, this is dope. And then somebody was like, yeah, man, you can be a personal trainer on, on a cruise ship. I was like, I'm a dude. <laughs> right. 
stupid. Yeah. Career choice, but I never made the cruise ship. Yeah. I never applied for one either. So, man. Moved to Dallas. Moved to Dallas. So, what brought you to Dallas? What was it about Dallas that attracted you? Man, I was trying out for the NFL. Okay. So, I came out here and I was training. Um, I had a great trainer, a few of them. And then, you know, did my tryouts, my combine and stuff. And when I didn't get that call, it was just like, okay, what's next? Hey, what year was that? 2012. 2012. Okay, 2012, yeah. you moved to Dallas. You tried out. It didn't work out. Um, and you said, what's next? What was that move for you? I became a personal trainer. Personal trainer. But I had to get certified. So you notice I have a degree in exercise science. Right. But to work in a gym, I need a certification. Okay. And I'm like, dude, my degree <laughs> trumps this. Yeah, right, exactly. That's not how it works. So you still got to get a certification. So now they're like, yeah, I mean, you, you make $40 an hour in training. I'm like, word, man, I'm about to get paid. Yeah. But that $40 an hour is $40 per client. Mm. The hour for that client. Right. So if you only got two clients a day, it's eight dollars. It's eight bucks. Yeah, that's it. Struggling. Yeah. That's I ain't true. know about sales. I ain't know how to market. I'm just walking the flow. How, how they say you gotta walk the floor and go gym? To the ghost gym. Ghost gym. Like it was crazy, bro. God, God had me like stressed, it, like like stressed out, bro. But not really stressed out, but yeah. he was showing me how close I was because I like this this ghost gym shared the fence with the Cowboys practice facility. In Irving? In Irving. Okay. Right. It was like right, like yeah. I drive up, they going up and making their left, I'm making my left into go to gym. Okay. So I'm like, dog, I'm like right here. Yeah. Like, and the uh, cheerleaders would train at the go to gym. gym. So okay. I'm just like, man, this is, all right, guys, so what's the move? <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, should I keep trying or not? And I ended up trying out for um, arena team here in Dallas. One of the first ones in Mesquite. Okay. The Marshals. Played there, had fun, I was starting, whatever, and just kind of re- realized like their pro sports world was not for okay. me. And how long you do that for? Shit, like eight games. <laughs> <laughs> eight games. <laughs> I was like, like, man, this is white. Yeah, you know? so you c- cut that up. Yeah, I was done. Okay. Man, so you stay still a trainer, or what do you do next after that? Yeah, so I was working with athletes. No, actually, I got a contract with a chiropractor, so I was doing rehab. Okay. So now I'm using my degree now. Gotcha. So now I'm doing, like, rehab on, like, people who had car accidents and mm. just, just, like, more, like, medical stuff. Right. And it was cool, but it was too slow. Yeah. So I started working with athletes who were injured. Okay. And then, now, and then, then I'm hearing them say, like, man, if I don't get a D1 scholarship, I ain't going to school because – I'm trying to go to the league, and I'm like, dude, two of my teammates went to the league. I had league shots. Like, half my team played yeah. arena ball. And I'm like, dude, we went D3. Yeah. And I'm hearing them say these things, like, if I don't go D1, I'm not. So all they're thinking about is D1. I'm like, what? Like, bro, they got way more schools out there that right. you can go to the league from. Or whatever. So I started, like, just, like, mentoring them on that. And then I started realizing, like, a lot of guys when I was training, they were getting better, but they wouldn't get a chance to play in high school because the politics, the coaches, and just just the nonsense. Right. I said, man, I want to create my own team. Create your own team. And that's all it was. I just want to create my own team. Well, at that point, what kind of team were you thinking? Just like a – Just a regular football team. Just, okay. you know, you know, honestly, dog. I was <laughs> like, I was, who y'all going to play? I, was, <laughs> I had no idea. But you want to create a team. I just, I just wanted a team just to, like – like get them to see like how to train and right, you know, right. stuff, 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 stuff like stuff like that. Then I just called one of my buddies. I said, "Hey, can we can we get a game?" The dude was like, "Yeah." I said, "Oh, this shit easy." <laughs> well, Where did he work at? Like uh, at a JUCO in Kansas. Okay, JUCO in Kansas. And I, so I had a schedule built before I even had a team. Wow, how many how many games were on the schedule? I had ten games. So you had a season. <laughs> All college games. College games. First year, never had a team. Didn't have a team. Nothing. I ain't had one. Hold on, there was like no no qualifications? Or? Bruh, once you realize like how like unorganized college sports is, <laughs> yeah. it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Dang, bro. Like what they, what you see isn't what it is. Right. And then once you find your end, it's all about, you know, your marketing and your professionalism then. Okay. You know, so... Yeah, so I had a schedule with, with no team. Schedule, 10 games, whole season, no team. All right, so how you make this work? I got to know. All right, so <laughs> I used the schedule okay. to recruit players. Okay. Where were you recruiting players in? High school or? High school. Okay. Everywhere. Dude, I drove to Houston. I was, I was all over Dallas. I, I, I went to Louisiana, and I recruited most of my kids off Twitter. 
So mm-hmm. I was, I, I had a kid from Michigan. I, I, had, bro, I was getting kids from everywhere. Dang. Let me ask you this, because so this, this it's not even a school yet, right? You just recruiting. Are you still like how you making how you survive? How you making money? You still training, or at this point you just fully focused on? Man, I don't know what I was doing. I wasn't making no money. Gosh, gotcha, gosh. Gotcha. Like, it, it wasn't. I wasn't doing anything, and I was like, shit, I'm not making no money doing this. I think it was, I, I think I might have been training. Okay. But I had like a couple clients, right? And they would pay, but not show up. In their mind. I paid you. I'm like, I don't care. I'm woke though. Like, right. It's 4 30 in the morning. Yeah, you up. <laughs> like, yeah. like, dude, my time is valuable. So I wasn't, I really wasn't caring about training. I was selling little supplements here and there, but yeah. nah, I was head in. Okay, so you on Twitter, you going all across Kansas, Michigan, Texas, you finding players, okay? You building them up. What's next? You start to like see like what's what's missing okay. in the college world. Right, okay. especially for athletes. Like people don't understand that athletes are a population of its own. Okay. And most people don't know how to talk to them. Gotcha. So they try to talk to them as if, like, like, like logical rhetoric okay. for me and you is normal to them. Like saying words like, "Hey, you gotta have a plan B." Right. Well, in their mind, bro, ain't no plan, plan B. B yeah. Like it's this. This is, this is it. This is it. Right? Or you, you know, you gotta work out. Why you why are you why are you working out so much? Well, this is what they do. So I thought they were just saying, okay, well, if I was in school, what would I have wanted? I would have loved to have been in the same classroom with all my teammates. Mm. Or all the athletes on campus. Like all the athletes, we all in one classroom together. Right. People would think that's uh that's just like dumb. But right. When you're in a room, and we do it in business, when when you're in a room of like-minded people, right. you thrive better. Right. So I'm like, I got all of them doing online classes. Okay. And we're all in the same room, and now we're competing on who, who, get, who get the higher grade. Okay. So now the competition is running through academics and athletics. Gotcha. Right? I only had about 29 kids. Gotcha. So I ain't even have a full team. Yeah. Like, this is a football team, bro. We traveling on vans. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, like, their academics was just important. And then some of them was on campus, going to school. Some of them, you know, online. <clears throat> so was this, you already started the college, or this is when they're, well, what point of this is this right now? Oh, this is first year. First year. Yeah. First year starting so, RPA. So first year, they had classes. Okay. Um, It just wasn't structured. I was, I was the only one. Got Did you have a facility? No, we have we had partnered with the Marriott for our dorms. Oh wow! So they was living in the Marriott. Yeah, so we part like first year I partnered with the Marriott. How'd you even get that partnership, bro? <laughs> no, like, like, no, you I'm can't skip over you. that one. How'd you get that partnership? Once you once you tell people what they need, mm-hmm. like tell them what they need. We're gonna fill your your hotel up for 122 days. Mm. That's not even twenty nine rooms or That's, no, it was. It was ten rooms, so but, so but they were two together. bedrooms. So it was it, it was two rooms and a um, a sofa bed. Okay. So each of them had their own living space. Okay. With a kitchen and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm teaching them how to get groceries, cook. Like it was like life, life skills. skills. Yeah. But also they had like dorm room stuff, and these people had 122 days of occupancy. Ten rooms, 122 days. Then. And of course, they gave you some type of discount, right? Nah, nah. They did. Nah, we was we was paying the regular rate, dog. What? Bruh, yeah, it was crazy. Like, it wasn't like, like, that hotel spot, the rates wasn't what it is now. Okay. Like, then it was like a normal rate, like $79. Okay. You know, something, something like that. Regularly going, when a Cowboys game, about 100 Okay. So, we was getting, like, like the regular Got like, you. weekday rates. Got you throughout so the whole. Was, yeah. Yeah, okay. Would you, did y'all already have financial aid in place or is this all out of pocket? Nah, so the financial aid was already there. Okay, so yeah. financial aid was paying for for that. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, it was it was chaotic. Like, it was just like, you got the money over here, but the money over here, and then some kids didn't get the financial aid. So I had to, like, go back to the drawing board and say, okay, so what if I recruit a kid whose parents make a lot of money? I then, how do I get them to pay? With? So it was just, like... Trying to figure it all out. So I was the admissions office, the financial aid office. Just you. The coach, the cook, the mentor. Just you. I drove like Bruh. Yeah. So the curriculum, you doing they're doing online classes, the curriculum. Who's that general? Going? General? Yeah. General. So we partner with uh 
community colleges, universities. Okay. And it's kind of how like University of Phoenix does, where they just bring in professors. Uh-huh. So we just partner with professors and they come in and they okay. teach them all their basics. Got you. And I did this first year. Got you. And you're the one reaching out to professors. Oh yeah, for sure. What is that conversation like? Hey, I just started college. Uh, I need your services for like. Yeah, so you just find out who's um who who needs something. Yeah. Like every business needs something, right? Right. Even the ones that we have now who have dorms, they need o- occupancy, right? Like so, you got small school. We have football and basketball. We can we can bring you 60, 70 enrollees tomorrow, right? You ain't gonna have that. Gotcha. So we talk about numbers. You know, we can bring you an extra three million dollars a year. Right. What's up? That's what's up, bro. Okay. That's okay. It's making sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's making you know? sense. Okay. So the first year, overall, the first year, how would you how would you gauge that? Was it a success? Was it trial and error? What was that first year like? In this industry, you don't you don't see the success till about two and a half, three years later. Okay. So now, dealing with 18, 19 year olds, you're gonna have friction. Gotcha. Where they are now, they're like, hey, coach, thank you, thank you, man. You're a real one. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. Like, what you said back in 2017, I'm seeing it now. Right. I'm able to, you know, so the first year was a major success because all those kids are doing something. Right. Right. right? Uh, well, most, most of them. And then every year after that, you, you, just, you just, like, start to see, like, we, we had our first uh, graduate. Dude graduated from San Angelo. Nice. He was first year. So right. now he graduated. He's a great dad. And, like, so all those things. Like, he was a, a father, a football player, and a college grad. Dang. And he, he never had a father figure to teach, teach on any of those things. Dang, bro. And he tell me all the time, like, without you, I don't know what I would be doing. Right, right, right. You know, that so. Makes sense. And what year did you start the college? It was 2017. 2017. Well, I had the idea in 2015. Okay, but actually. I was go. waiting on friends and stuff and 2017 yeah. so four years be four years in yeah four years in right now that's crazy okay and since then bro like you like you talk about then you were at the marriott online classes but now you have a whole facility right yeah okay so how'd you how'd you get that facility where's it at and what year was that uh we got it in december december so we, so we just took it 2020 yeah okay so 2020 was a it was a, it was a dope year for us yeah even in COVID, it was dope oh, yeah man yeah. We got a facility um and it's in Euless, so that's that's where we at. But it's ten thousand square feet. We are already almost about to outgrow it already because we got so much stuff going on in there. We got we got baseball. We got physical therapy. We oh, do wow. free COVID testing there. We do like we do everything in there, dog. Got you. Like yeah. So. And how many students are you at now, or athletes? Or? Right now we're at about eighty three. Okay. Yeah. So we were at 80, 83. Um, and then this spring we actually it was it was different. So we played football and basketball this spring. Okay. But normally you got like spring, spring, basketball, and fall. Football. So football and basketball going at the same time this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. So that was like a new a new curveball. Right. Which is like you just, you got a team over here and a team over here. Yeah. You, know, you got a game in West Texas, but you got a a game down in South Texas, so it's just yeah. you know, so you you had to learn all those things. But yeah, so football is going right now. Um, we got about 80, 83 guys. We'll 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 probably crack a hundred in the fall. Okay. Yeah. What's your recruiting process like this this day? Is it still yeah same thing? So here's what's crazy, right? So when COVID happened last year, everybody had had to like adjust to like on recruiting off Zoom. Right. Well, we've been recruiting off the webcam. Right. Because right, right. I was the only one. Yeah. So how you duplicate yourself? You be online. So we were already doing Zoom recruiting anyway. Right. So right. nothing for us changed last year. Gotcha. Like it was just it was just cool. Man, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, bro. I think a lot of people want to know, bro. Okay, so young black man starts his own college, right? How does somebody fund starting their own college? Fund it? Yes. Man, let me tell you, I started a thing with zero dollars. Yeah. Zero. No loans. No investors. Nothing. No. No nothing. Nobody even knew I did it. Yeah. I just popped up with it, and <laughs> you know, we had it. Yeah. But what I did was I was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and learning like. OPMs. Other people. Like, yeah. So now I'm like, okay, well, this cost this, this cost this, this cost this. I got to get this many kids to cover all of this. And then the rest is profit. Oh. I had no overhead because, I mean, we didn't have no buildings. We didn't, none of that. So it was like, yes. how much do I need to, to cover all of this? And then 
just ran with it. <laughs> That's it up. sounds simple because right. I simplify everything. I, I try to make it make sense for me. Right, right. But for the average person, man, like, I would say start with some money, but you don't need it. Gotcha. If, 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 if you know what you need, if you know your numbers. Okay. You know what I mean? So know your numbers and you, you can make it happen. I see. I mean, that's to me. I mean, it's crazy when I when I when I when I look back and think, I'm like, bro, this dude has his own college, bro. Yeah. Like people just don't start colleges, man. Like. Yeah. So we doing a lot of di- a lot of different stuff too. So we're the, yeah. you know, we're the new HBCU. Okay. So in 50 years, you'll. This will be the way that HBCU should have been ran. Mm. I have no governing body. Okay. None. You can't tell me who I can recruit, who I can sign, what we can do, where, where where we can play, where we can't play, how I talk to you, how I mentor you, how right. much time I spend with you. Like you can't tell me any of that. Okay. So if I want to spend ten hours a day with a kid on his future, I can do that. Gotcha. So what, what, what is your school classified under? NCAA? No, nah, we only we're not in, we're independent. Independent. So we play in NCAA schools, NAIA schools, JUCO schools. We you play. We play everybody. Okay. So, and we can do that because we're not governed by nobody can tell us who we can and can't play. Gotcha. Okay. So for your kids, let's, let's okay. So for your kids, when they come here, like, how does this? Like, where does this take them? Like, do you is your goal like to say help get them in the league, or like what are their goals when they come when they start coming to RPA? So one thing people don't understand like when they fresh out of high school, mm-hmm. they're only following what they're being told. Right. So most of them say, "Well, I want to go to school and go to college and and play ball." What are you, what are you gonna major in? Right. Why you Why you want to major major in that? You know, we got we got kids want to get into construction and trucking. Mm-hmm. You don't go to a four year school for that. For, for, but they only thinking about right. what, what somebody says. So their goals, every kid is individual. Mm-hmm. So we ask them what they what the, what they want to do. What's their top school? Some of them can come here and transfer out. Right. Some of them can stay here. Some of them create a whole business. Like my director of media and marketing was my very first recruit at RPA. Oh, nice. And he wanted to be in media, marketing, graphic right. design. So he has his whole company. Yeah. Partnered with, with RPA. He's yeah. 22 years old. Oh, nice. And he's been doing our media since first year. Like, right. He made our logos and everything. Like, dude, just been doing this since day one. Gotcha. Know? So everybody's past. So, so, so traditional JUCO is you come in and their goal is to push you out to the next school. Right, right. Well, how many of those kids actually graduate? Right. And graduate in what? I have a degree that I don't even use. For sure. You know, but I got a bunch of awards in football. Yeah. Man, it doesn't equate, yeah. It doesn't really matter. Man, but you've been doing you been doing some major things, bro. Like I've been meaning to get with you, but I'm glad we're doing this on camera, bro. For sure. So now this partnership got with Africa. How that even come about? How they find you, or did you outreach and you're bringing American football to the country of Africa? And how? And this is, is this like the first time it ever being done, or yeah. like kind of walk us through yeah. the whole situation. So 2018, um, I was invited to be a Forbes fellow up in Boston. Okay. So I'm up there and uh, I was just playing around, man. And this is why I became more conscious of things that I say. Right. Because I said I got all the plan. I said, dog, I'm, I'm gonna meet somebody who, who gonna get me to Africa. Okay. Because I started seeing. So it was intentional. You want to go to Africa? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, why not go to Africa? Right. right? Everybody talks how bad Africa is, but I want to see if I'm see by myself. But I don't want to go with just just to go. Right. I want to go with some value and some substance. So. Uh, I meet this lady. Um, her husband does basketball training in Zimbabwe. Okay. And he had to deal with the embassy, da da da, and then they had invited me to come. So the embassy follows me on Twitter from from Zimbabwe. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, this shit real. <laughs> right? But we didn't we didn't we didn't have basketball yet. Okay. So he was like, we're gonna bring you back once you get basketball. Okay. So. From there, we we played the 2019 season, and the Ghana football, or they were watching one of our games on Facebook Live. Okay. People don't realize, man, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, dude, yeah. use it, use them all, <laughs> use all that. Yeah. So I'm so I'm streaming the games because I, I went coaching, then I had a staff of co- coaching, then so I'm watching the games and I see um, Ghana is uh, yeah. rooting you guys on. 
So I thought it was just, I, just, I thought like it was just a dude in America who right. was from Ghana who was just trying right. to break them. But they were actually in Ghana. So dude hit me on the WhatsApp. He was like, here's my WhatsApp number. I ain't had WhatsApp then. Okay. So I download WhatsApp. Gotta have WhatsApp. Man, I download <laughs> WhatsApp. I'm like, oh, this is fire. Like, yeah. Right? So I'm talking to a dude. And then uh, from there, it was, I got a friend over in Nigeria. I got a friend over in India. Uh, I got a friend over in here. So then boom. And then what happened was I meet another guy who was in like this oil and gas. Okay. Like big time guy. Get that done. Boom. Hook me up with this company out there who's like running the show. Okay. Get with the Minister of Sports. Didn't realize like you got to get deals with the Minister of Sports. In Africa. In education. Okay. So what I did was I got a deal exclusive where to put football in Ghana or in Africa, you have to, you have to go through me. Oh, wow. And that's when they <laughs> got real interest in like okay. different countries were hitting me up. It was like, hey, you know, we saw this is and this. Do y'all want to brand I could even looking for yeah. this? People are realize, man, the thirst for American football may be dying down in, a, in a, I'm in America, but it's picking up heavy All right. everywhere else. Okay. And then, you know, Nelson Mandela did something where he united the whole country. Off of, off of sports. Mm-hmm. So I'm not just bringing football. I'm bringing all of our academics, education, mm-hmm. all my friends who got courses. Like, right. we're bringing everything to the country, like creating jobs off of tourism and like wow. air, we bringing everything. Okay. And it wasn't just about sports. So that's how I felt. So now I'm, 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 I'm like meeting with the Minister of Sports, the Minister of Education, the Minister of Tourism, the man, like, it's just like, it was turning up fast. Dang. And here we are today. <laughs> but hey, tonight. Dang, bro. That's crazy. So, like, overall, what what does this do for you as a as an individual um, in, like, the long term of things? Like, where do you see this going for you? Bro, man, so anything you do, you never set out to, like, you never set out to, like, make history. Right. right? But you hope, like, whatever you do becomes historic. Or has an impact. And that's all I want to do. Right. Like, my son can say, look at my daddy. Somebody say, I'm like George, I'm like George Washington Carver. <laughs> so I'm like, bro, that's, like, when when my son and, and his kids and his kids' kids look at that. So people always talk about, like, the legacy as far as, like, generational wealth. Right. Legacy is generational wealth and generational impact. For sure. My son's last name will carry weight wherever he go. Yeah. You're you're at Calhoun. Right. Your daddy was this is this. So, um, and to do something for a country, using something that that changed my life. Sports. It, without without sports, I don't think I ever make it out of New Orleans. Right. Right. <laughs> you know. Not so, facts. How do you take what saved so many African Americans here? How you take that over, over, you know, over there? And then one of my biggest things was I don't want to go over there and take none of none of their talent and bring right. it to America. You want to? Like, I want to keep like like keep your commodities there, right? Because the biggest export from Africa is human talent, for sure. So why not just keep it there? You build it up and let them do that there, and then. Okay, so what, is, so what does that look like when you're bringing American football, sports, education to there? So are they creating other colleges? Or other? Okay, so it's going to yeah, be... It's going to be RPA Africa. Okay, in different parts of Africa, different but they're all going to be RPA. Yeah. So you're bringing your own college. The whole, the whole game. Wow. And then I'm bringing the American kids there. Okay. Because exposure creates the elevation. So if these Americans. It's going to be like a term or is it going to be like. Yeah. Oh, so wow. They're going to spend a year, two years in Africa okay. learning the culture, but they also get to build them a brand. Okay. Because, Elaborate on that. Because of international marketing mm. for a company like, like Cosign, right? Right. You, you, you pay a kid X, X amount, of, amount of dollars to, to like market your stuff, wear your, wear, your, wear your stuff in Africa. In Africa. How much would it cost? Traditional marketing. Mm. Yeah, you're right. A lot. Yeah. But how much would you pay a kid to go ahead and do that? And if the kid does that with 10, 15, 20 companies, oh, yeah. I mean, they just got paid to play football. Yeah. Uh, I see where you're going. <laughs> That's what's up. You so you, I mean? yeah, you really giving these guys the opportunity, the opportunity to make money, uh, educate themselves, learn, play a sport that they love, bro. And it's life experience, bro. 
so many people who hasn't still haven't not only left their city, the country, but even been to Africa. Like, yeah. yeah. So we so we're trying to like use sports as a platform. So RPA's um, slogan is the platform is sports the program is life. Mm, okay. And we're gonna give you a whole lot of life. Right, that's what I'm saying. A, a lot. I'm saying. Like sports, do you play sports like ten like ten weeks out the year? Mm-hmm. It's fifty two weeks in the end of the year, so what you gonna do for the other four forty two weeks? Yeah, you get a life experience. Yeah. And what's great, what I like about you, bro, is you get deals done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, well, it was a recent partnership that you had with Under Armour, too, right? Yeah. So, how'd that come about? Like, man. <laughs> you, you pitching or, like, they found you or what? No, they found us, man. Mm-hmm. Like, what they did was they are trying to compete in Dallas. And Jared Jones got, got Nike. And oh, yeah, Nike. Every, everybody wants Nike. Yeah, right? Nike soda for right? So, Under Armour needed to penetrate a market that they wasn't in. Okay. So... We, we in a whole different market with no governing bodies and whatnot. So, boom, we did a direct deal with Unknown. Direct, okay. Dude, we met them at a taco joint. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they came down, man. We had tacos and, and tequila. <laughs> tacos and tequila. And, 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 and how long? Is there like a term for the deal? Like yeah, so it started off as a three-year. Okay. Now we're in negotiation for a long-term deal because we got Africa, Haiti, and DR. Gotcha. So. I got DR, too? Yeah. <laughs> It's getting crazy. Yeah, it's getting nuts, dog. It's That's nuts. what's up. So they provide all the uniforms. Yeah. Uniforms. Yeah. Equipment as well? No. Okay. So we got, um, we, we actually wear Zenith helmets. Okay. And, uh, you know, basketball is just basketball. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, Under, Under Armour you know, was, a, was a good move because it it brought attention to who RPA is, mm. right? And I wanted a short-term deal just in case this is not where we want to go, right, right. you know, for life. You yeah. Because, I mean, they pulling out of, like, a lot of different things anyway, so it might be somebody else on the market. Got you, you got know, you. So you want to test it out, see how it goes, yeah. make sure the partnership is mutually beneficial and move from there. Yeah. Bro, so many layers, bro. It's so many, <laughs> and that's, you know, you know, it, once once it's all said and done, we'll put it all together. And when when people sit back and re- realize what we accomplished in four years, mm-hmm. man, it's gonna be like mm-hmm. it's gonna be crazy. My story began like officially began two thousand nine. Two thousand nine. Okay. When I, when I made that that decision to go to the Louisiana College. Okay. Everything on before that was Reggie Calhoun. 2009 kicked off Reg Calhoun Jr., yeah. the businessman, the entrepreneur, the marketer, the go-getter, the risk taker. Hey, and what do you think was that switch for you? Not wanting to go back home. And they put me off the team, and I said, dude, I'm not going back home. Right. I did that at PV. I went back home, I joined the Army. Right. So now I'm off the team at Training in Training Valley. I'm not going back home. And so you like, I got to get it. I got to do something. I gotta get it. So how much how much are you actually doing outreach in business? Because I mean, you're getting some major deals done. So how how often are you like pitching and trying to close deals? I pitch every day. Every day. Every day. I pitch every single day. Cold email, cold pitch, don't matter. Cold. Call them DMs. See the, see those see those DMs. Mm. Them. What everybody else look at DMs for? I ain't doing that. Right. I jump in every company DM and I tell them why they should work with me. Gotcha. Tell all of them. Are you on LinkedIn? I'm on that too. You using LinkedIn? But I barely use it. You barely use it? Yep. Because everybody who I need to talk to is on Instagram. True, true, true. LinkedIn, dudes looking for jobs. Mm. But I'm going to tell, tell you why LinkedIn also works. And it works for like us when we look for sponsorship. You can find, because Instagram, a lot of times you might see the company, but the actual decision maker, their Instagram name, they might not have the information in the bio. But you go to LinkedIn and type in, under Armour brand partnerships. Yeah, you gonna find the person uh, Under Armour brand partnerships. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like that's like a un- that's like a that's a gem that a lot of people don't know about. And you know, for us, that's bro, gym, yeah, gym. it's a gem, bro. Like I mean, my LinkedIn profile isn't up to par, but like now I've been working on it because anybody directly I want to find, I can find them on LinkedIn by searching. You know what I'm saying? Because their name, because it's just a business, right? Uh, a platform. Their name, business, title is going to be right there. And then same thing, take the same method you do on IG, just shoot your shot. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Shoot your shot, bro. Connect. Tell them, like you said, why they need you, bro, and 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 just go from there, bro. But I would definitely say, bro, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm definitely about to hit that. Yeah, man. I, I just got to clean my profile. I'm up. barely on it, but I get on it. I'm, 
I'm usually like requested by some people. I'm like, oh, okay, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah. But on Instagram, I, I've been having so much success with that. It was just like, this why I'm winning. Right. You know, like I thought Twitter would have been that been it, but Twitter ain't it. Man, now Twitter's not it for it. Twitter is more like a like entertainment. Yeah, it's for tweeting. Man. No, no DMs. Like, nah, it's, it's just straight tweet. Yeah, because yeah. your message get lost in the DMs. So like much. Yeah, I don't even have, I mean, I still have a Twitter, but I don't even log into it no more. Bro. See, I'm, I use it because that's where our market is at. Uh, on Twitter. All the kids are on Twitter. On Twitter. Hey, see, I'm straight Instagram. Uh, Instagram, uh, I share, like, some of our, like, articles on Facebook, you know what I'm saying? But mainly Instagram and then now LinkedIn, that's using cool. that for, like, the outreach, bro. Like, you know, I feel like, you know, for business, it's all about outreach, closing deals. Outside of that, everything else is a hobby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you're not closing deals, conducting business is a hobby, man. Dude, I connect. I try to connect everybody. Like, if I see something, it, it may not be for me, but somebody I know may man. use it, right? So I'm like, hey, you know, it just, because I'm always talking to somebody. Right, right, right. So you never know when you're going to double, double, double back and need to use that. Man, so 2017, four years in, bro. What's been like the hardest part of all of this, bro? And how'd you overcome that? Man, just just keeping the staff. Mm. Um, because in this industry, certain people look for certain things to be done a certain, a certain certain way. So when they come here and we do it the RPA way, right? You'll have more benefit through us, mm-hmm. but the work it takes, they're not trying to do that. So, gotcha. so the retention, it was nothing that. It's not that we did anything wrong. It right. was what we require of you, the professionalism, the way you tweet, how your social media is ran. Right. Like, we want you to build you a brand. Gotcha. Don't just come work here, build you a brand. Gotcha. And most of them just don't, they don't. want that and they'll, and, and they'll bounce. Man, that's crazy, bro. But, you know what I'm saying? You worked through that, came over through, overcame adversity. Oh, yeah. Sure. And now you're still here, bro. You got deals, Africa, Haiti. DR. I'm gonna just keep saying that. Africa, Haiti, DR, bro. Yeah, bro. That's amazing. Young African American businessman, entrepreneur, educator, mentor. That's crazy, bro. But um, before we get out of here, bro, I want you to leave us with some motivation, right? Some advice. Um, then tell people where they could find you. Any last words that you want to make sure our audience knows about? You know what you got going on. You and RPA College. Yeah, man. So RPA is on the verge of changing the way that. College is being looked at, right? Because if people understand the definition of college and what college actually provides, mm-hmm. anybody can be a college. Okay. You can be a college, like, because um, it's just just figuring out where you fit at. Right. Um, where we want to be is where we're going. And I'm pretty excited about what's happening in the next few months. And what I would leave you guys with is don't think about what can go wrong. Right. Think about what can go right. Mm. And you ask yourself if everything you're asking for, if you got it right now, are you are you ready for it? Mm. And if not, get ready. Yeah, get ready. Because what if everybody say what if everybody say yes? Yeah. I don't even do classes on overcoming up ob- overcoming objections. Right. I I I'll teach you <laughs> how to handle if everybody you talk to say said yes. Yeah. What you gonna do? If you, you talk to ten folks and ten folks say yes, are you, you ready? You ready? Yeah. Most people not. Because they preparing for two out of ten. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. the, that's the average, right? Right. Yeah. Now, they're looking at numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a, at a hundred. Yeah. Right. Like a hundred percent. So you know, don't think about what can go wrong. You think about what can go right. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, the whole nine, it's Reg Calhoun Jr. I'm simple. That's what's Just up. me. <laughs> Just you me. know, and then RPA will will be the face of college. And you're you're seeing the change now. Most of these kids want to create businesses. For they sure. don't want to go to school. Right. They want to get to it now, right? Mm-hmm. And we getting them to it now. Okay. So that's who I am, man. I got a lot that I can unpack, but we'll be here for 17 days and try yeah. to un- unpack yeah. me. <laughs> that's what's up, man. And, and last but not least, bro, I'm gonna. Uh, just for, for my purposes and for audience purposes, bro, I feel like, man, you got, like, the hustle mentality like me, bro. Just real quick, bro, like, what what is, like, that pitch you tell to people when you're, when you're, when you're trying to recruit? Like, what it, like, how do you, like, how do you do that? What's, like, your elevator pitch to them? Oh, bet. So what's your name, man? KG. Hey, man, I'm, now, Ray, I've seen you out there playing, man. You look, you look nice. Appreciate it, man. So what do you want to do in school? Man, I want to be an entrepreneur. Right, so do you think you go to college to be an entrepreneur? Man, not really. So, why are you attempting to do something that's going to prolong what you really want to do? 
and ask for everybody said to do. Right. So at RPA, we're going to teach you how to do exactly what you want to do and still get what you're trying to, trying to get. Come, come play for us, but come and do something for you. Because I'm an entrepreneur myself, and we always have a saying that you're in business by yourself, but not by yourself. Come learn how to do exactly that. That's what's but up. But you still can play a ball, though. I can still hoop? Oh, he can still hoop. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> All right, man, y'all heard it here right on Cosign Conversations with my guy, Reggie Calhoun Jr., doing major things, not only locally, nationally, internationally, but globally. So y'all make sure y'all follow him, stay tuned, and support the business and the college. Hey, guys, what's good? Thanks for supporting Cosign Magazine by watching this video. If you really enjoy this content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Hey.